uh, convicted of the same crime. <coughs> but every person who comes before a court has his or her own story, his or her own history, his or her own culpability, different culpability, different needs, different prospects, and a system which ignores those facts is irrational, That's right. and it breeds contempt and bitterness and cynicism, That's and right. it does absolutely nothing positive in the effort to prevent crime. Second thing I want to say is about this issue of cost. You've heard a lot about it. The cost of this legislation must come from somewhere. We are continue to be in an economic and budgetary crisis. That's right. And this money will come out of somewhere. It will come out of health care, yeah. it will come out of aid to education, yeah. it will come out of aid to cities and towns. Yeah. And one place it will come out of is the court system itself. And you may not know this, but our court system is already, in many respects, on the brink of collapse. We have courts that cannot open for a full day because they don't have the staff. Right. We have judges who don't have law clerks. We have courts that can't hire stenographers to take down what the testimony is. That's the condition of our court system as it is today. And when we add this to it, it will suck out more resources into corrections and away from the persons and the system that is trying to deliberate and decide on guilt and decide on the proper disposition of persons. This legislation uh, will prevent this system from bearing the load that is going to be asked to bear from the deluge of new cases that this legislation will give. So for that reason too, we cannot afford this in any way, and it should not be passed. That's right. Carol Rose was the executive director of the American Civil Liberties Union.
mostly fear of not getting reelected. I might. <laughs> Thank you. 